we knew we had to go to a green environment in order to do the jungle work. We thought about Costa Rica. It doesn't really have the same kind of infrastructure that other places have. And it made a lot more sense to go to Hawaii. Now, is there any way we can do it so we can see this side of him? Can he hug on this side so we can see it? Yeah, so if the camera's there. We started our first day at the Honolulu Zoo and that was gonna be the petting zoo. And so we did a few things, we added a few things, we put some flags and stuff up. And then we had actors actually going around in gray suits being the little baby dinosaurs and kids were riding them and all that stuff. And that's kind of how we started our day. It was a fairly, fairly easy day. It gave the crew a chance to kind of coalesce and you know, kind of work together for a little bit. I can still ride the Triceratops in 47 and a half inches. This place is for little kids. All right, cut. And cut. Yeah. Cut in. Not bad Not at bad all. all. Not bad all right. at all. And then we begin to move out. Uh, we moved across the island up over to the Kualoa Ranch, and we did a whole bunch of stuff up there at the loading platform. What they didn't know at the time is that the soft tissue is preserved because of the iron in the dinosaur's blood generates free radicals. Good. Now a little bit louder, a little bit more hyped up. What do you think is going to happen from you just staring at them? Look at them and laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Cut. That's embarrassing. Cut. That's embarrassing. <laughs> we had the gyrosphere loading platform, which we built out in Hawaii, and then this gyrosphere, which we didn't shoot that on a soundstage. We had these kids out in this thing, traveling around through the jungle, uh, and that stuff to me feels completely real. I did feel like a real Jurassic Park because it was so jungly. I actually felt like I was lost or I was in Jurassic Park. You'll see like a blur and then you'll see it's definitely a dinosaur and then you see it's a dinosaur you've never seen before. And then they, uh, it was so beautiful and picturesque and they had these giant gyrosphere balls on tracks and they'd have a guy with a remote control driving it along and I'd just be pretending to maneuver it on the joystick. It was, it was pretty awesome. Go, 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 go! Right, go. Right. And three, two, one, drop! Oh. Drop! Oh. Drop! Oh. It was pretty physical, and, you know, I didn't do any training or anything before this, and so we get here, and I'm running down fields trying to keep up with an ATV while there's a supposed Indominus Rex behind us. Some of the days, it was a good workout, kicked my ass. I mean, Ty's in better shape than I am, probably, so I was out there, like, huffing and puffing. Ball pass, please. Ball pass. I didn't say we'd make it easy. We move over to gyro. We got to jump. Yeah. Basically, they're being chased by our big, bad dinosaur. One, two, come on. And they come across a waterfall, and that's their only way to get away from the dinosaur that's going to eat them. It's a 40-foot waterfall. The boys, they did all of the beauty shots at the edge, and then when we jumped, we had uh, two doubles uh, jump off. We saw them go down in the water, and then we go back down below and have the boys go underneath the water and pop up like they did the jump themselves. They put me in a helicopter, and I could look down and see the Indominus Rex paddock, and I was like, man, I'm, whoa, I'm definitely in a Jurassic movie. <laughs> it was quite an introduction. The park needs a new attraction every few years to reinvigorate the public's interest. Kind of like the paddock, the idea was that way up country, away from prying eyes, they had built this large containment for this new asset that was not just a dinosaur, it was something else. So we had to build at least two walls of this paddock and a big observation room. We built a fairly big set. It's built out in the jungles in Kauai. We're talking 90 foot walls, maybe 150 yards wide, two stories. All the greens were brought in. I mean, it was amazing. Dinosaur. According to my watch, I just ran 65 miles an hour. Oh, 
as cheap as people. Oh, sorry, my, my watch actually isn't capable of telling that. Sorry. It's an estimate. Uh, Chris Pratt's going to give this message here. Uh, All right, listen. <laughs> Cars, they fall from the sky sometimes. Right, thanks, Chris. Okay, here we go, guys. <laughs> We did a lot of practical stuff in the paddock, and so that was kind of the first time that we kind of started getting into a little bit of action on Jurassic World. Three, two, one, go! Oh. We're about to shoot Eric Edelstein, who is an unfortunate paddock worker who's about to be eaten. If you look like me, you're not going to make the end of the movie. It's a giant bummer. Three, two, one, go! We're not allowed to take video. <laughs> Don't tell anybody. Thank you so much. You really make me look like I know what I'm doing, and I couldn't do this without you. Thank you. Have an incredible three-day weekend. Thanks for letting me do man. Crazy. We'll get the moment when its head comes up, and she goes, <gasps> and that'll yeah. be its like last breath of life moment. Are you with us, Colin? Yeah, absolutely. Colin go said, go. we need to have a working animatronic in this movie, because that's how this series of movies was built. What I wanted to do is use animatronics in a moment of intimacy. And we had a scene where they were going to come upon this fallen apatosaurus who was going to die. And so John Rosengrant and the guys from Legacy all came in with this extraordinary creature that they'd created. The day that we had our one animatronic dinosaur on the set was a very special day. It was sort of an homage and an honor to Stan Winston's wonderful animatronics on the first Jurassic. It starts from the head, which Rich operates. Still Trevor takes the, the neck. neck. And I do the uh, breathing operations. Different bladders in the throat. And that's great. The exhale when she falls is beautiful. Did you hear that, Jason? Your exhale when she was falling was great. Okay. Only take three. And action. There's a very emotional scene where this thing is dying in my arms. And so it was really helpful to be holding something real that looks so real and is so beautiful. As puppeteers, it's making these things live and perform. It's bringing a character to life. Unfortunately, in this case, it's bringing one to its death. But in doing that, it's telling a story. There's something almost spiritual in that scene. As the life leaves this animal, you don't feel like it's a robot ceasing to be operated. You feel like the spirit and the soul of this creature is going up into the sky, and that's a testament to those guys. I mean, that was, that was unbelievable. Okay, she's starting to go. Not too much life left. She's going. One, two, three. She's gone. When Chris and I were getting to act with that animatronic dinosaur, there was such a performance. And getting to see that and interact with that, it was really emotional. I just wanted to take a say it was just such a huge uh, honor and a privilege for me uh, in my life as a filmmaker and as a person to have John Rosengrant and Legacy here doing this today. It meant a lot to me, and I know a lot of us. <laughs> 